Howdy, this is Ranger, the self-appointed water parks correspondent for In The Loop. I've got a very special assignment today as I'm back in my home state of Iowa to review Lost Island Water Park in Waterloo. Lost Island just opened a brand new theme park across the street which has gotten them a lot of attention, at least in the coaster enthusiast community anyway. But this water park has been around since 2001 and it has quite the following. In fact, it currently ranks as the second best water park in the nation, according to USA Today's 10 Best poll. In 2020, it actually won the poll. Is Lost Island actually one of the world's top water parks? Or is this ranking as meaningless as Iowa football fans holding up their index fingers in the air after a September victory over Southern Illinois? Let's take a look. The flagship attraction at Lost Island is Wailua Kupua, the park's water coaster. The ride starts with the lift up a conveyor, but the rest of the hills are ascended by electromagnets. This creates a smooth and fast-paced slide experience. The ride is somewhat short, but the airtime is extreme. The third drop has a massive pop that I consider to be the strongest moment of airtime on any water coaster I've ridden. It's that good. After several rides though, we found the front of the raft is a lot better experienced in the back as the front provides considerably more air. Fortunately, you can pick your seat though as it is not dictated by the ride operators. You must have a group of two, three, or four people to ride though. I rate Wailua Kupua as one of the top 10 water coasters I've been on and maybe the only elite option with a wait time that is consistently under 15 minutes. The next ride I want to highlight is Emerald Adventure and Jade Rapids. At first glance, these appear to be standard single or double inner tube slides. But Emerald Adventure has a light show and music to make for a memorable experience. You can even pick which beat you want to hear by touching this panel at the top of the slide. I think that the Caribbean drums are the best match for this slide, but Beach Party is fun too. Note only the emerald slide has this feature, but both slides have thrilling twists and drops along a fully enclosed route. These are terrific slides to lap. Now moving on to Calypso Cascade, which is the park's family style raft slide. It's more intense than most similar rides you'll see. The first several seconds are in a pitch dark tunnel, and there's a quick drop that makes your heart skip a beat. The speed with which you hit the exit pool is pretty impressive too, although the ride is short compared to similar slides. On the same tower is Tangerine Tempest. This is an inner tube slide for single riders only. A twisting drop sends you speeding into this bowl where you spiral around two or three times. This one is average for its type. The shape of the bowl and placement of the water jets usually end your ride one rotation too soon. A third slide on this tower is called Kiwi Coaster. It's not super fast, but has a couple of drops in the dark and some splashes on a mostly enclosed route. Next up is the Molokini Crater, which is a tornado slide. These are super common, but this is unique because it can be ridden with these green two-person tubes. Note these green tubes have a combined 400 pound weight limit. If that doesn't work for you though, no worries. You can still ride this ride with a larger group using a big circular raft. A speedy and thrilling drop sends your raft up the side of this giant funnel. Riders experience weightlessness for a brief moment before spinning, dropping and splashing down the funnel and out the bottom. Ta Katipo is a four lane mat racer slide. Each lane has a 360 degree helix up top followed by a double drop. The final dive can offer some nice air if you pick up enough speed.
Polynesian Plunge and Samoan Splash are the two body slides you see here. These ones are just okay. I usually give more speed and force on comparable body slides. They do end with a quick shoot into the pool, which makes me wonder where the speed was during the rest of the ride. After several rides, we found the purple one to be more intense than the pink one. At the summit of the same tower is Lost Soul Falls, a speed slide. This trough is quite precipitous and offers great speed and nice views of the park. Usually these tear up my back, but this one was surprisingly smooth. I highly recommend this one to anyone who can stomach the large drop. Now to something with a lot more universal appeal is the park's Lazy River. Kailahi River is well integrated into the park layout. There's a number of splash features and some theming along the route. It's decently long with multiple entry points and has an abundance of inner tubes. Inside of the Lazy River are two kids splash areas. Tahiti Village offers a tipping splash bucket and a few small slides. Starfish Cove on the other side features a small splash area for the smallest of children. From the park's entrance, turn right and you'll find Tsunami Bay, which is the park's wave pool. It's standard in both size and depth, which is about six feet maximum. As you can see, inner tubes are not only allowed, but encouraged in this wave pool. Most places charge for them, but they are free and plentiful here at Lost Island. The waves are fairly substantial too, so bobbing up and down in an inner tube is enjoyable, if not even exciting. The last attraction on the tour is Blue Iguana Lagoon. This activity pool features an obstacle course and a volleyball court. On the other side of the rocks and waterfalls is a play area for children. The park has these kids areas spaced out, so there is always an option nearby if groups need to split up to watch the little ones. This area also has a mermaid meet and greet, but this is a special event that only runs a few times during the summer. A few general comments about the park. The tone really fits the island theme that they are going for. The palm trees may be fake, but there is always a nod to the island theme, whether it be the buildings or this airplane behind the tornado slide. I really like that the park has tons of extra tubes for the slides, the lazy river, and the wave pool. Most parks either don't have enough tubes or they charge extra money for them. The overall value for this park is great too, as single day tickets cost less than $40 as of 2022. If you think that's too much money, I'd invite you to look at the pricing for Volcano Bay, DreamWorks Water Park, or even Hurricane Harbor in nearby Chicago. So is Lost Island the best water park in the United States? Goodness no. Is it in the top 10? Also no. Ultimately, a park needs to be measured by both the quantity and quality of attractions it has, and a complete run-through of this park can be made in two hours or less if the park isn't busy. That's the only complaint I have about Lost Island, though. They've done everything right to build this place up, and it's about as good as it can be for the size. But Lost Island has a serious group of dedicated fans, as evidenced by their ranking in the USA Today poll. Being from Iowa, I can tell you firsthand that Iowans have a tremendous sense of regional pride and take care of their own. Even though this park isn't as good as the locals probably think it is, being ranked at the top of the 10 best poll is still quite a statement, and Lost Island is a place Iowans should be proud of and support. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I've got a lot more water park videos on the channel, so check those out if you want to see which places are worth traveling to. I'll see you next time, Ranger out.